Hi, I'm Jim Stroud, and this is my podcast brought to you by Evergreen, home of great podcasts like Chad and Cheese, The Talent Cast, and others. Find them online at evergreenpodcast.com. Yeah, boy! <laughs> this will be interesting. Here, here's, a, uh, <laughs> here's a question for you. Have you ever watched pornography in the workplace? If not... Well, chances are you know someone who has, and that trend is costing companies billions of dollars in lost productivity each year. Now, companies have added filters to their computer networks and they've monitored internet usage, but those tactics are old school and they don't work anyway because people can simply access the material on their personal devices, which can quite possibly, uh, probably, (laughs) open your company up to a lawsuit. So what is a company to do to protect its enterprise? Well, have no fear. A new phenomenon called the Purity Industrial Complex is coming to your rescue. Ah, Details on that after this. Do you love four-letter words? Who doesn't? And then you mix recruiting news and insights in with those four-letter words. I'm Cheese. And I'm Chad. And we are the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Tune in wherever you listen to podcasts. We We out. out. Employer brand professionals know that doing great work involves doing big, high-level strategic thinking and getting your hands dirty. If that sounds like the kind of work you want to do, come listen to the Talent Cast. It's the world's most highly caffeinated employer brand podcast. People watching pornography at work is not a new phenomenon. In fact, there have been news reports about it on and off for at least a decade. Typically, it's treated like the punchline of a joke. (laughs) For example, I remember a few years back, uh, 2014 to be specific, it was reported that federal employees had admitted to watching porn at work because of boredom. (laughs) Here's a news clip about that. Well, no wonder federal workers aren't getting back to investigators. A lot of them are too busy watching porn. And I thought we were over this stuff when some SEC employees were caught, well, looking at the stuff. The Washington Times says this goes deeper. I I, I mean wider. I I mean it's more involved than we thought. To Kate Rogers, who's been checking it out, not the porn, the guy's apparently looking at it. Kate. Neil, government employees busted for watching porn say it's not their fault. They were just bored. A lack of work has led to watching X-rated videos on the job and on your dime. One worker even watched for eight hours a day while working at the Federal Communications Yeah, Federal Communications Commission. And you know what? It gets worse because these workers rarely face criminal prosecution for time or attendance fraud. The Washington Times says the FCC declined to comment on how it handled the worker with the eight-hour-a-day habit, but said it follows Office of Personnel Management guidelines on these matters. It's not just porn, though, because paralegals at the U.S. Patent Trial and Appeal Board were also caught on dating sites, online shopping, and more while they were on the job. According to a recent report, these workers were paid bonuses for years, totaling an estimated $4 million paid out for time that they weren't actually working. Back to you. So wait a minute, they were on porn sites and then shopping at the same time? Were they shopping on porn sites? I don't know what the order was, but they were doing both. Despicable. And here's another example. Not a news show, but a late night talk. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel had a crew question pedestrians on the street about whether or not they watched pornography at work. And before they answered, uh, the audience uh, in the TV studio would guess whether or not the person had indeed watched pornography at work or not. And uh, (laughs) it sounded like this. What's your name and where are you from? Valerie, I'm from Los Angeles, California. And have you ever watched pornography at work? How do we feel about Valerie? <laughs> all the women are saying no, and uh, okay, all right, let, well, let's find out. Yes. <laughs> where did you go? Uh, no, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you where I work. What kind of work? At a telecommunication center, a call center. AT&T? No. Sprint? Maybe. 
<laughs> Maybe. It was Sprint. I don't work there no more. <laughs> Okay, if you put the words porn and work in the same sentence, the likelihood of jokes is about 90%. However, if you were to ask uh, Michael Leahy, author of Porn at Work, exposing the office's number one addiction, he might disagree with you. In his book, he shares some startling stats like this. Uh, one stat was 70% of all online porn access occurs during the nine to five workday. 20% of men and 13% of women admit they download porn at work. And two out of th three, I think it is, yeah, two out of three of 500 polled uh, HR professionals said they have found pornography on their employees' computers. Now, he added that porn use is widespread in American workplaces and will worsen as young people who grew up in a culture saturated with sexual imagery into the job market. Here's a, uh, a very, <laughs> very interesting quote uh, from that book. In addition to loss of productivity, employees who surf porn put employers at risk of lawsuits, Leahy said. Employees who notice co-workers downloading such material and are offended can file a lawsuit claiming a hostile work environment. And the porn habits of an executive, if discovered, can embarrass a company, depress stock prices, and lower morale, Leahy said. Leahy said employees who download porn in the office might be more prone to become sexual harassers. Porn desensitizes you to what appropriate boundaries are in the workplace, he said. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the Encyclopedia of Mental Illness, does not recognize pornography addiction. Still, Leahy says, employers should offer employee assistance program support to workers with the problem just like they do those with alcohol or drug habits. Using blocking and filtering technology to stop employees from downloading pornography is not the answer, Leahy said. Savvy computer users can always figure out a way to get around the roadblocks or simply use their personal wireless devices to download pornography, thereby avoiding using an office computer, he said. Leahy said repeat offenders should be fired, but that is in a company's best interest to try to work with a good employee with a bad habit. There are a lot of people if they are given an opportunity to get help. It won't cost the company much and the employer will gain a loyal employee, he said. Hmm. It's important to note that Michael Leahy's book was published in 2009. But according to recent stats, it could have been published yesterday because it's just as relevant. Proven Men Ministries and Barna Group surveyed 1,000 U.S. adults nationwide in 2014 and found out nearly two-thirds, 63% of men, admit to viewing porn while their bosses assume they are busy working. More than a third, 36%, of women are also sneaking a peek at porn while on the job. So... How much money is this costing companies? What's the best way to deal with this, especially in an era of really, really low unemployment? Well, I'll share a few thoughts on that after this. Entrepreneur Kylie Jenner makes an estimated $1 million per sponsored post on her Instagram, which makes her the highest paid celebrity influencer on the social media platform, according to the 2018 Instagram Rich List compiled by Hopper HQ and Automated Instagram Scheduler. Jenner is followed by singer Selena Gomez, who gets $800,000 per sponsored post, and star soccer player Cristiano Ronaldo, who earns $750,000. Together, these and other up-and-coming stars contribute to the $1 billion influencer market, which is expected to double in value this year. Now, all that is great until there is an Instagram bug and you lose over a million followers, which happened to Kim Kardashian, Justin Bieber, and several others. If it could happen to them, it could most definitely happen to you. The moral of the story? 
Don't build your house on rented land. I suggest you do what I did and get your own mobile app with Superpass. Superpass makes cutting edge content apps easy, instant, and affordable. So whether you already have content or are looking to start making money by selling your podcasts or videos online, Superpass can help. So sure, build up an audience on social media, but drive the traffic to a property you own and that property should be Superpass. For more information, visit Superpass at www.superpass.app. That's www.supapass.app. Superpass.app. And be sure to tell them Jim Strauss sent you. Is it possible to calculate, I mean, really calculate how much money companies are losing when their workers are watching porn? Well, <laughs> Webroot, a cybersecurity company, has a pretty compelling formula for crunching those numbers out. It goes like this. In February 2010, the number of people using a work computer to visit sexually oriented websites was as high as 28%, according to research conducted by the Nielsen Company. The average visit to a porno site from a work computer was about 13 minutes. During the month, the average worker was estimated to spend 1 hour and 38 minutes on such sites. If we leverage data extracted on March 30, 2012 from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which calculates the average hourly earnings at $23.23, and we multiply that by one hour and 38 minutes, we see a loss of roughly $38 a month per employee due to pornography usage in the workplace. Now, multiply that by 12 months and a yearly loss of $456 coming from every employee that views pornography can be estimated. The number of U.S. employees reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics as of March 30th, 2012 was uh, 132 million. If we divide this by the 28% of employees who use a work computer to visit porno sites, up to 37 million employees view pornography in the workplace. Thus, if 37 million employees are viewing the average amount of pornography cited by the Nielsen Company, the annual productivity loss to companies is a staggering $16.9 billion. That's billion with a B. So, if watching porn at work is costing companies billions of dollars, opening them up to potential lawsuits and other liabilities, and if monitoring the company's internet usage is not really resolving anything because workers can simply watch porn on their own personal devices, what's the answer? Well, the answer might be the emergence of a new industry called the Purity Industrial Complex. I learned about that from the Chicago Tribune when they published this article called Christians turn to artificial intelligence to stop porn use. In the article, it describes how evangelical groups are turning to artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies to help their members fight addiction to online pornography. In what I think is a truly innovative way to curb pornography addiction, churches are partnering with companies like Covenant Eyes. Here's a quote from the article where Covenant Eyes is discussed. Covenant Eyes, based in Owasso, Michigan, is one of the companies that creates and sells software filters designed to detect computer or device users accessing pornography. The company works with pastors and ministries to address pornography use among their members. You know that people in your ministry are watching porn and you know that porn use hinders spiritual growth and healthy relationships, the Covenant Eyes website says, addressing itself to pastors. But figuring out how to effectively help people overcome porn and find freedom can be overwhelming. 
After buying a subscription to Covenant Eyes and installing the software on their devices, users are asked to provide an email and phone numbers for a list of friends, family, or pastors called accountability partners. If a user then accesses pornography on their laptop or smartphone, the software then would capture a screenshot, blur it, and send an email to the user's ally or allies who they have selected to help them in their journey, says Dan Armstrong, a spokesman for the company. The ally or allies then get what's called a concerning screenshot and indicates that they should review the activity according to the company's website. The concerning screenshot will not be immediately shown on the report so as not to immediately expose an ally, someone receiving a report to potential pornography, the website said. But the blurring will be removed if the reviewer clicks on an inspect button, the company said. The goal is similar to the technique used by Alcoholics Anonymous to help people overcome addiction by creating partnerships with sponsors who help newcomers stay sober. Covenant Eyes is not the only company doing this. There is also X3 Watch and OpenDNS that works on similar principles. Now, imagine this. Someone in your office is caught watching porn, and for better or worse, they are a key contributor to the company's success. Instead of firing them outright, give them a warning and present as an option Covenant Eyes or one of its competitors. It is certainly more effective than monitoring your internet and with accountability measures in place is the best option of it not happening again. Best case scenario, the person cleans up their act, becomes a more dedicated worker that is more loyal to a company that supported them when they were down. As a result, the company receives a higher work output from that person and stronger retention numbers overall. Worst case, you fire them and immediately free your company from liability. However, you risk them working for a rival and thereby losing whatever positive advantage you had when they work for you. And maybe in their new job, they manage to hide their addiction long enough to put your company at a competitive disadvantage. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm curious. What would you do if you were HR in this type of situation? Leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. If you love what you heard, hate what you heard, or don't know what you just heard, I want to know about it. You can leave a comment concerning this podcast on my website at www.jimstroud.com. In addition to finding source material and related information for this podcast episode, you'll find other goodies that I hope will make you smile. And if you have not already, please subscribe to my website. Your continued support keeps this podcast train chugging down the track.